I'm David Hunt and welcome to The Art Hunter. My guest today, smart ass. They're all smart ass, it's all our guests. He's a director, a videographer, graphica, oh, we'll have to work that out, editor. He is, uh, he has directed a lot of music videos. We'll talk about that because there's one, uh, one person in particular uh, for some of the biggest names in music, as I said. Uh, he also lectured at JMC Academy, which we've worked out that I was there lecturing in a totally different um, arena at the same time. And also, like The Art Hunter, he has produced a show on Channel 31. Uh, it's called The Song Room, and it's gone on to win an Antenna Award for Best uh, Music Program. Uh, the Art Hunter hasn't won any award, so, you know, like, we don't like him already. Um, yeah, yeah, up him. Uh, he, uh, now, this is where it gets interesting, because it's part of the reason why he's here today. Uh, art produces an array of disciplines. Some are very unconventional, uh, like using a chainsaw to create sculptures. Hello. 10 years in the making, the, our guest today has produced his first doco. It's called Lee. Ryan, welcome to The Art Hunter. Thanks, David. Uh, now, so much to talk about, mm -hmm. but let, let's talk about, you know, like, where did it all start for? Why, why, why film? Why video? And what is it? Is it called video gra uh, videographer? Uh, if you uh, talk, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, wh where did that all start from? Where, where the interest at school? Or? Yeah, uh, not really. Like I think I started. I did start doing stuff early on with like a handy cam. I think my uncle owned one, and not many of us owned them, so it was a sort of only one going around. Um, and then a friend of mine, uh, his dad had one as well, and we used to just film things of us as teenagers mucking around doing stupid things. And, uh, but I was more interested in always sort of, you know, cutting it together into something. Okay. Um, but that was way early on. And uh, I didn't really get into filmmaking until quite a bit later um, when I decided to go and study, so. And well, what did you do beforehand? You know, like totally divorced from all of that? Yeah, I like, I did a little bit on the side as far as like, you know, making videos for friends and like uh, lots of videos of my daughter and edited them to, them to make DVDs and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but. No, way to, I was working in the wine industry doing okay. um, at a, a winery in the Arrow Valley. Right. And I was there for about six or seven years. Okay. Um, and yeah. what, what was the big moment where you thought, I've got to take this plunge? I, I made a film for the winery. Uh, we made, I, made a, I made a short piece, which was for a Christmas party, that was just for our part of the business. So, and no one was to see it you know, particularly customers or anything like that. It was more for our own fun. Yeah, sure. And um, somehow the marketing department saw it and they actually really liked it. Uh, and so they asked us to do a um, documentary on their 10 year anniversary as a, as a company, the family owning that particular winery. Wow, wow. And uh, so I did that, had no idea what I was doing. They gave some sort of budget to hire cameras and everything like that. I didn't know how to turn the brightness down like the like I didn't I didn't understand anything on the camera and stuff but somehow we put something together and they really liked it and so I got a bit of a bug from that I guess right um, and then yeah I went to study probably not long after that and that was at JMC yeah yeah and, and then you ended up going back there as one of the you know like lecturers yeah so I did I was I studied there for a short amount of time and then and then I sort of left early and went and did some work and then a job came up there and I just happened to apply for it and um and work there in facilities so running all the equipment and the orders and everything like that yeah um and then uh yeah slowly sort of started you know teaching some classes there and everything like that so now i mentioned that um you've done some videos for some pretty big names in in the business who um well yeah i, I mean music stuff is what i like doing um like i've done a lot of a lot of live music in particular okay um so gortier is a pretty big one with hello with him uh, did uh, a show with him and his his band, The Basics, uh, called The Song Room. Um, oh, that was on Channel 31. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was the piece sort of, you know, putting all that together with all different artists and everything yep. like that. Um, but shot a lot of live music with them as well and, and bits and pieces over the years. Um, yeah. And and there was a heavy rock band that you yeah, worked with and, as well? Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of a band called Cog, who are uh, Sydney-based and... Uh, yeah, they're sort of been one of my favorite bands forever. And I was just like the opportunity to come up to film them. I was like, yep, definitely we'll do that. And 
uh, had lots of fun doing that. So yeah. And so all of a sudden, here, here you are. You know, like you're you, you've started your own business on on the side, yep. um, filming you know like corporate videos and, yeah. and whatever. But then just for the interest sake, you you, you know you did the show on Channel Thirty One mm -hmm. with somebody that's world famous, um, and uh, and you know, like, and you end up winning an award for it, which you know like that must be really satisfying. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, it must have said like the, the people that organised it, um, Chris Schroeder from The Basics, he's sort of the main person who put it all together uh -huh. um, as far as the artists and everything like that. And they're sort of part of the band every week. Um, but yeah, it was really satisfying to piece something like that together and get recognition for it. So I was part of, you know, we filmed it and I edited it and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, it was, it was satisfying, yeah. Right. So here you are, you, you know, like you've got a business, you're doing okay, you've got a, a, you know, like you're married, you've got a couple of kids, and then all of a sudden you decide to make a doco. Uh, what's the doco called? And it took you 10 years to make it? So it's called Lee. Um, it's, it's based on a local Melbourne chainsaw sculptor, so a chainsaw artist. I did it for a school project originally. So it was, ah. it was at, when I was at JMC, we'd do, Couple, had a couple of projects first and then I think our third project was to do a short 10 minute documentary and um, for an earlier piece we did like a multi-camera TV show and I actually met Lee through a friend um, and we filmed a segment with him just off the cuff called him went to his house t two minutes later and first time I met him and he was in full character and just acting up and he told this hilarious story uh, I think it's on YouTube somewhere and um, and he was just a really interesting guy and then once it come to do the documentary project, decided to do it on him and um, went from there. But that was just to do a 10 minute piece uh -huh. for, for the school. Um, once th that first interview that I did with him was like maybe three hours long. And all the, the stuff that came out of that was like, okay, there's way more to this than just a 10 minute yeah. thing. And I was still very fresh. I didn't know what I was doing again. It was pretty early days, but there was enough there to to work with something and know that oh this is a bit of a bigger project yeah now here he is you know like because you it could be a bit boring you know like at the end of the day mm -hmm. but he makes sculptures using a chainsaw mm. well that's pretty radical to mm. begin with and he's a bit of a character you know like uh, when when i was watching the trailer i, I got a little bit scared of him at one yeah, stage yeah. i thought oh, it <laughs> seems a bit scary yeah but you have actually said that you know like his bark is worse than his bite mm. but that adds to it doesn't it so it was a perfect um topic to to work on wasn't it there's a lot going on in like with lee it's just really interesting regardless like his background is really interesting just if you just to do a profile piece on him it'd be really interesting which is what i kind of thought i was doing um all the amazing stuff unfolded as we were filming for the actual doco. But um, the main thing was, is that he's obviously, there's the background that, you know, in the backdrop you got that he's a chainsaw sculptor and that's interesting in itself, but also what he's been through in his past. And then the misconception of him being some big, tough, bikey guy, whatever, which, you know, I probably had that on the initial, you know, thought as well. Um, after five minutes spending time with him, you realize that that's just completely not the way yeah, it is. Yeah. And um, he's quite the opposite, so. Right. And you, were aware of him because he lived fairly close to you and yeah and his yard is full of a lot of these sculptures yeah everyone knows his house in Eltham it's just on the main road and it's just there's sculptures everywhere and they've you know he's been doing it for a long time now so um and yeah I remember seeing it you know growing up um seeing sculptures out the front well when I was a teenager probably um so I didn't know of his place didn't know anything of him um and but when my friends met him and became friends with him that's how I made contact yeah. so you made the the doco for you know like your studies School, yeah. um and then when did the the moment come where you thought I, I want to go a little bit further with this I want to make a real doco out of it what what was the turning point was it meeting him more and more or yeah well we did like there was more than just that interview for even for the 10 minute one I did a three lot three hours more. you said yeah like I reckon I don't know how many hours of footage I got but I got way too much for a 10 minute doco just because I was so into it and just was you know pretty keen to do anything filming wise um, so there was plenty of content within that to know that there was something bigger there I didn't know what it was going to be exactly but I knew there'd be something um, and so then I went and started a crowdfunding campaign through Possible um, just to try and get funding to extend it out to be able to shoot for 
my thoughts were I'd shoot at least one day a week for a year, something uh -huh. like that. And not a clear plan of what would happen, but see what happens, you know. Um, and if not, it's just going to be like a profile piece on him. And uh, yeah, so it went from there, yeah. So what, what happened? You started following him around and, and going to events that he was doing? Or? Uh, sort of. Well, I think once I got the funding, it was enough to, you know, um, buy a good enough camera to permanently use and then, you know, sort of see me out for a certain amount of time of filming, like I based it out on how long it would take to shoot. But then all these things just unfolded as we were filming that just changed the whole thing. So Can you give us a, a few um, hints? Uh, yeah. Because you don't want to give the plot away. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, I mean, we so in the film he does, the, the goal if he comes up with is to climb Mount Fuji. So Lee was in a pretty bad way um, at this point, like couldn't really walk from his house to the service station down the street, like 100 metres or something Why, like that. Why was that? Because he had gout, really bad gout, and um, from, from, from too drinking. Much alcohol. Yep, yeah, yeah. Um, so, and we go into all this in the film in quite a lot of detail as to why, you know, and, and what the reasons are behind all that, um, you know, and drug abuse in the past and everything like that. Um, but yeah, he just um, he came up with this idea to climb Mount Fuji to get himself well while he was drunk. <laughs> come up with the idea, <laughs> and it's on camera. So the moment that he decides oh, really? to do it is, is when we're in the middle of an interview. Yeah, I was like, okay, that sounds pretty good, and then had to go home to my wife and say, all right, so we're going to Japan now for the film. You know, for anyone who knows Lee, they kind of like laugh about it and think it's hilarious, but also go, yeah, it's, it's what Lee does. I mean, he went to North Korea and he's, he does all this stuff like that. So it's not super surprising, but yeah. it was surprising as well. And so you were following him to film him, the climb. But mm. while he was there, was he um, making um, sculptures? No. So the, oh. the biggest the biggest part of the film, I guess, is that, you know, he's... Lee had really, he was really in a, in a bad spot and he was also had sort of really lost his passion for creating art, okay. you know, and he was just doing like, you know, playgrounds and council work and it's not what he got into it for and he had no drive to do all that stuff, um, which I had that drive to make the film and he, that's why he sort of allowed me to do it is what he's told me anyway, because um, he had been contacted in the past from others to, to do a film on him or whatever. Um, so he, you know, was his goal was to get clean of alcohol and get fit and get healthy again to climb Mount Fuji. But all the things that came out of that from him being clear was, was what happens in the film. Right. So it's almost like the Mount Fuji goal is a catalyst to all these other things that the goal itself isn't super important really, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, part of it was going to Japan and doing that, but all these things that before Japan that happened was, was really interesting, so. And that was the gold for you. You know, mm. like that, that was, you know, those golden moments that mm -hmm. you were capturing. So you were spending more and more time with him, getting to know yep. him more. Mm -hmm. um, so you would have had so much footage. Yeah, I, I've never, never worked out all the hours, but it's a lot. Like I, I knew the hours when I first started shooting because it was all on DV tapes. So I was like, I okay, got 60 minutes, 60 minutes, but now it's all digital. It was a bit harder to, to work out, you know, yeah. so. I'd be a bit scared to see how much like there's, there's so much footage, but um, but I just made the most of it because I was like, especially in Japan, I was like up at five every morning filming yeah. pointless time lapses that may get you like it's just never ending. Yeah. But might as well, you know. And and editing, you mm. did it all yourself. Yep. Uh, so that process must have taken you a long yeah. time. So that's the thing. I mean, ten years to make it. It's sort of like it's not really a ten year process of making it, but that's how long it's been stretched out because I've been, you know running my business and raising the kids, all that sort of stuff. So it's, you yeah. know, so it t takes its time there. Yep. Um, but the editing process was like, I started it, I thought, okay, this will take me 12 months. And then it took like five years. Whoa. You know, so it just Whoa. was, yeah. It was, so uh, yeah. did you lose, um, you know, like the passion or did it get stronger because no, the more always, you got into it? I always felt confident in the story. Like I always knew it was a good story. It was just whether or not I could pull it off or not. So that was the question and that's still up in the air, who knows. But um, yeah. but to me, this story was always interesting and there was something there. So it was always worth pursuing. Um, and because I'd worked on it so long and still felt that way, I kind of felt like, well, there must be something there if I'm feeling like that. Yeah. yeah. And he was you know, like positive all through it, you know, happy that it had happened and that he got through it and, and knew that there was this footage of him. Happy, yeah, happy that the doco was being made, I guess, yeah. Um, there's lots of moments in the film that aren't happy so much, like, but, you know, that's all part of the film. Yeah. Um, but still totally 
um, open to the fact of making the film. Lee yeah. was always open with it, yeah. Uh, and you've actually, um, it's, it's gone to a, a few festivals and it's yep. already won awards. Yep. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. Uh, and w what, what does that mean to you, um, you know, like Ryan, that all of a sudden you've ma made this doco that 10 years in the making uh, and uh, and you're only dipping your, your toe in the water a little bit because you're you're saving yourself up for some of the big um, you know, like film festivals. Mm -hmm. But what does it mean that you've already started to win awards? Um, I don't know yet. Like it's sort of yeah. I don't know you're how not I feel there about when it. are they happening? Yeah, or? especially because of COVID and stuff. It's a little strange. You just find out you've won, and you you know yeah, it's a little bit strange. Um, it's good to get recognition, like in a way that just at least. Like I've submitted to quite a few over the next 12 months. Most of them are coming up all the way until September, November, you know, next year. So not a lot have happened yet, but so oh, far okay. so good. Oh, okay, not until so this time next year. Yeah, though. yeah. Whoa. So they've submitted to them, but they're they're processed. Yeah. The notification is so far out. Yeah. So the ones that I have submitted to so far, it's just got it, the strike rate's been really good. So it's good to at least feel like maybe it's doing okay. But I, you know, I don't know. So yeah. you know, but so far so good. Yeah. Well, so far so good, and you know that confidence that it's that, yeah. it's, that it's giving you. I'd f I wouldn't feel great if it hadn't got into any of them so far, because <laughs> there's been a few. Yeah. Um, but it's just been a bonus that it's won some. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. So is it is it like you know like that I, I can't remember what its name is so that that guy that had the lions and tigers in his house in uh, America and he ended Tiger up in King, jail whatever. yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so is it following in that the footsteps of a show like that No I think yeah that's pretty wild I would say about that doco that it's like you know I don't know everyone in that doco seemed like the worst people <laughs> ever you know like none of them would be like you know yeah. I didn't even people. want to watch it. Yeah, you know, like, and everyone was <laughs> it's saying, entertaining. Oh, it's I like the doco, but yeah. yeah. But no, Lee's someone. I think it's very different. I think people will okay. just love Lee. Like once they've seen it, they'll just they just really feel for him and what he's been through and just love him as a character. So it's sort of um, it could have that perception of yeah, crazy sort of you know chainsaw wielding you know sculptor whatever um, gets up to all these different things. But no, it's a bit more um, deep and yeah. Okay, um, and over your shoulder is the poster for it. Yep. Uh, and I mentioned to you off camera before we started. I said, "Oh, you know, like, have you deliberately done it so it looks like uh, Jack Nicholson in The Shining?" Going, yeah, yeah. But and you went, "No, that's never come up." No, and it's funny because, like, so I, I've become really close with um, Lee's brother Wayne, who passed away a few years ago, and he, he was sort of really helpful in making the film. And he is a film buff; he knows everything about film. And he just finds it hilarious that I don't, I don't know much about film. Like oh. I'm really not, I don't know directors. I don't know, like I'm, I'm obsessed with docos. Like I've seen so many docos and stuff, but I haven't even seen The Shining. So <laughs> there you go. Well, I, would, I would roll these off to, to Wayne and he'd be like, this is ridiculous. You don't know all the, any of these <laughs> classic films and you're making films, yeah. but that's, yeah, I don't know. So. Yeah. And docos are becoming the, you know, like the it mm. um, part of the film festival now, isn't it? Yeah. You know, like docos, yeah. it's getting more and more docos are being shown and, and yeah, like still a lot of films, but yeah. you know, it used to only be a small section or it'd be late at night, the docos would be shown. Mm. But now the film festivals around the world, docos are really popular. That's huge, yeah. And like some of the bigger ones that, you know, like I've been hearing from, it's like, um, they get like 8,000 submissions, you know, it's insane. Whereas, you know, maybe like 15 years ago, 20 years ago, n not as much competition, yep. you know, it's yep. harder to get the money to make it. And yep. like now low budget stuff, you can just do it, you know, like yeah. there's nothing to stop people from doing it. So yeah. there's a lot of competition out there, um, but heaps of good content, heaps of good platforms to get out onto streaming and everything like that. Yeah. There's so much, you know, options. So you know, like, let, let's tell people out there that might be interested in, um, you know, like getting a doco together. You know, like you've 10 years, uh, editing five years, mm. uh, and the incredible story, and you know, like go, going to Japan, and you know, like, I, I, I can't wait to see the, the whole doco. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's the, that amount of passion, it's that amount of time and effort, and, and you've got a family as well, you know, yeah. and a business on the side uh, that, what what keeps you going what what is it that and you're know, like and how do you know about all the festivals to go after um i think yeah i don't know it's that that stuff is what i want to do this for is is making films like this you know um 
the bread and butter stuff, making corporate videos and product videos and all that sort of stuff. It's fine, it's fun and it's, it's good and that, but it's not what I'm passionate about. This stuff really, and this stuff isn't about making money at all. It's just about doing it. Well, you for normally love, don't you know? do. No, yeah. that's right. Yeah. It's like you wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it to people to go and make a feature doco to try and make money. It's really not that about that. So it's just about the passion for it, you know. Um, and yeah, film festivals, it's just, you know, it's, it's pretty easy these days. There's usually one portal that you go to and you can okay. and you can submit to all of them from one place, minus a few, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh that's that easy. Yeah, it's, I, you, I, and you only upload to one page, have all your information in one spot. Wow. And you don't have to make all these multiple submissions. So it's actually quite a good process now, okay. yeah. So here you are, you know, like you've already had success with it, um, and it's just about ready to screen for a, a lot of, um, uh, you know, like your friends and family, and mm -hmm. it's sold out the um, the opening night. Mm -hmm. uh, what what's your thoughts? You know, like have you got another ten years in you to uh, produce something else, or have you got something that might be you might be able to turn around, or have you learnt a lot? Yeah, I've learnt a lot. Like I could, I definitely say that it, would, it wouldn't take anywhere near ten years to do something like this again. Like you know, so um, I've definitely learnt a lot. Um, but I think the next thing I want to do is something short. You know, like just a quick, just something fun. Maybe not. Well, how, a doco, how long you know, is yeah. this? The running time of the film, yeah. uh, hour and thirty-eight. Yeah. So okay. Length, yeah. Well, which is pretty long for a doco, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So you'd go, you know, like what? 45 minutes or something oh no like a five ten minute film like a shoot on a weekend kind of thing like that's oh, what okay. i want to do next like just something fun and easy and not so much pressure you know yeah. like i want to get a bit more creative with things that don't take so long and then something will come up you know i'm i guess it's just like i think something will pop up and it'll be obvious that that's an idea for a doco until it comes i'll do whatever you know making making short pieces and, and, and do stuff, you think yeah. it might be music because of your love of music maybe who knows possibly i think i'm just always interested in people like with stories like that like i just don't like i wouldn't have made a doco on chainsaw sculpting like i find it interesting like and it's and art forms amazing and all the rest of it but i don't find those docos interesting where it's just about a subject in particular like that it's got to have something to it you know the human element it's got to go cr pretty deep and have some sort of drama to it you yeah, know yeah. and they're the ones that i like watching the best is ones that unfold as you're watching it they're not i mean i like retrospective stuff and that but it's nice to see things unfold for you as it did for the filmmaker at the same time yeah, yeah. um and that's what i prefer to sort of yeah. see so those things you can't really plan ahead you kind of just got to go with the flow which is what i did with this it was just like all right we're going here we're doing this and just and then all these magical things just happened by chance, just um, which are in the film, just by luck, you know, just timing. Yeah, and, yeah. I, that's interesting that you commented that um, uh, you didn't, you, know, you didn't go looking at a doco about um, uh, a sculptor who m makes it out, of you know, with using a chainsaw, because mm. that that would interest me. You mm. know, like I, I mean, it's an interesting a, backdrop to the yeah, film, but yeah. it's like I think. It could be something interesting for maybe twenty minutes, exactly, but not a, not a feature. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. not a feature. But mm. it's his backstory that's so interesting and mm. intriguing. Yeah, um, you know, that's that's what um, you've got me now. I'm I'm just absolutely intrigued in mm. um, what what unfolds and and, and thing, his yeah. journey. His journey is mm. he still? Oh, I shouldn't ask this, but I'm going. No, to that's anyway. right. Yeah, um, is he still clean? Or you know, like or fairly clean? Uh, or? Not so much, but like you know. <laughs> so he's we've had, we've, had a, we've had a very interesting like, but that's a, that's sort of part of the film too. So it's not you know without giving anything away. It's not just like some happy ending or anything like that. It's pretty open. It's still a, 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 hey, mm. maybe you could do a second. Yeah, people have said that. Oh, nah. <laughs> I think, You've had the, enough of the, that. The things that have happened in the last five years since I started filming are even more like crazy. So it's just like you've got to stop somewhere, with Lee in particular, is what I'm yeah, saying. Like all yeah. these amazing things have happened since then. Yeah. Um, and he's, yeah, he's, and there's just so much stuff that I shot that is interesting stories, I think, but just can't make sense in an hour and a half film. Yeah. Mm. Well, congratulations on it. Yes. You know, like um, it, it's intriguing, and and you know, like and not giving up. You know, and and that's a lesson to to everyone, isn't it? Not get ten years, five years editing. Mm. Um, you know, like that's Ryan. That's a, an achievement in itself, in a way, isn't it? Yeah, I sort of felt like just I'd be happy just finishing it for my own 
satisfaction just going okay i did that even if it doesn't get success or whatever it's it's fine it's some some thing finished that i've done and that i've like poured everything into and for once you go i'll try my hardest at this for just put everything to it and see what happens yeah um and at least there's something to show that's finished you know yeah. um yeah and and have you taken um other you know friends who are filmmakers or have learnt along the way because you've said come and help me you know like hold a camera or uh not so much no i think like there's been it's been um other people come up at the same time with me working at the okay. same sort of level like yeah. people that i studied with and yep. we've learnt together and everything like that yep. um there's certain people that i just love working with and we just get along and, so well so yeah. it's just always on the same page and nice and easy and everything like that yeah um so sort of learning together more so yeah okay and you'll use them again the oh always yeah, yeah yeah and um, you know this i shot you know most of the film myself obviously early on but then a lot of the later stuff like um that we've had to recapture certain things and stuff i've got other people on and um yeah. And it's just, yeah, it's great to use people that are good at what they do, yeah. Well, Ryan, congratulations. Thanks. And I wish you all the success in the world because these are stories that are, are big in the doco world and, and I, I think you're going to do really well with those. So, Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks very much. You've been watching The Art Hunter. I'm David Hunt and we'll see you again real soon. See you later.